Aloha, welcome to Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and boy have we got a show for you. I am standing near the top of Kilauea, the world's most active volcano, and as you can see behind me, she is really erupting. This is truly a rare once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to be able to experience nature at her most gloriously powerful. To give you an idea of the size of this thing, I'm standing about a half a mile away from that fountain, and it's spewing molten lava roughly 1,100 feet in the air. That's twice as tall as any skyscraper you've ever seen. I personally have never seen anything like it. It's just incredible. Lava is really hot, melted rock that's pumped up 40 miles through tunnels inside the Earth. Those tunnels lie beneath volcanoes like this one. Sometimes flaming red rivers sweep through forests and fields, smothering them under a blanket of blistering ooze. The lava is so hot, it turns anything it touches to fire. And watch how fast it moves. No matter where you go in Hawaii, you're walking on a volcano. That's because the Hawaiian Islands are really the tips of giant volcanoes sticking up in the middle of the sea. All this beauty, the spiked cliffs, gouged out canyons, rivers and waterfalls, snow cone mountains, and black sand beaches is here because of volcanoes. Most of Hawaii's volcanoes are inactive, but Mauna Loa and Kilauea are still very much alive. Even when they're not erupting, they let you know they're cooking. The earth is so hot that when it rains, the water seeps through cracks and boils in the steam. Then, when it's ready, the volcano erupts. This is what Kilauea looked like yesterday, getting ready to blow. The lava is just beginning to leap out of the cone. You know, volcanoes aren't born very often, but one was born about 45 years ago in the country of Mexico. And that's what this true story, Hill of Fire, is all about. Hill of Fire. Thomas P. Lewis. Pictures by John Sandon. Read by Fernando Scandon. Once there was a farmer who lived in Mexico. He lived in a little village, in a house which had only one room. The farmer was not happy. Nothing ever happens, he said. The people in the village thought the farmer was foolish. We have everything we need, they said. We have a school, and a market, and a church with an old bell that rings on Sundays. Our village is the best there is. But nothing ever happened, said the farmer. Every morning for breakfast, he ate two flat cakes of ground corn. His wife had made them the night before. He put honey over the cakes and drank cinnamon tea from a clay mug. Nothing ever happens, he said. It was still dark and the farmer got ready to leave for the field. His son Pablo was still asleep. 
Perhaps today, said his wife, something will happen. No, said the farmer, nothing will. Late in the morning, when the sun was high, Pablo came to the field. Pablo, said the farmer, why are you not in school? There is no school today, Papa, said Pablo. I have come to help you plow. Pablo helped the farmer plow the field. The ox pulled and the plow turned up the soil. Suddenly, the plow stopped. The farmer and his son pushed and the ox pulled, but the plow did not move. It sank into the earth. It went down, down, down into a little hole. The little hole became a bigger hole. There was noise deep under the ground, as if something big had growled. The farmer looked, Pablo looked, the ox turned its head. White smoke came from the hole in the ground. Run, said the farmer, run! There was a loud crack, and the earth opened wide. The farmer ran, Pablo ran, and the ox ran too. The farmer ran all the way to the village. He ran inside the church and rang the old bell. The other farmers came from their fields. People came out of their houses. Look, said the farmer, look there. That night, no one slept. Everyone watched the fire in the sky. It came from where the farmer's field had been. There was a loud boom, and another, and another. Pieces of burning stone flew in the air. The earth was coughing. Every time it coughed, the hill of fire grew bigger. In a few days, the hill was as big as a mountain. And every few minutes, there was a loud boom. Squirrels and rabbits ran and birds flew away from the fire. People led their burros and their oxen to safety. Some of the people went close to the steaming lava. They carried big crosses. They prayed for the fire to stop. When the booming stopped and the fires grew smaller, the farmer's house was gone. The school was gone. The market was gone. Half the village was gone. One day, some men in uniform came in cars and trucks. So you are the one with the plow that opened up the earth, they said to the farmer. They laughed. You're lucky to be alive, amigo. The soldiers looked at the village. Everyone must go, the captain said. It is not safe to live here any longer. The farmer and his wife and Pablo and all the people of the village went with the soldiers. The farmer found a new house. It was not far from the old one, but it was safe from El Monstro, which means the monster. That is the name the people gave to the great volcano. The people made a new village, then made a new school and a new market. They had a great fiesta because now they were safe. Now the farmer had a new field. Every morning he woke up early. It was still dark and a monster glowed in the sky. Sometimes Pablo brought the children of the village to see the farmer. From the field they could see the volcano smoking, like an old man smoking his pipe. Can you make another hill of fire, the children said. No, my friends, no, no, said the farmer. He laughed. One hill of fire is enough for me.